Uh, thank everybody for taking your time to join our briefing sections. Uh, today we are going to talk a little bit about our master program in bilingual corporate communications. I'm Dr. Cindy Ai, also the program leader of MABCC. Uh, I will try to be quick because I, I guess you may have some of the questions that you really like to ask or interact with me, you know, uh, you know, promptly uh, during these uh, Zoom sections. So uh, I will try to brief, give a brief background about uh, what is the program, uh, how did it develop uh, to its shape till today, and what are the focus of the program, uh, what are the students doing, and what are their career, and probably there are some questions in mind that you would like to talk to me directly, and then you're most welcome to type the questions in the chat box, or you can just turn on your mic and ask directly. Okay, so with no further ado, uh, allow me to share the PowerPoint slide. So um, we are under a big family of uh, the MA scheme of Chinese linguistic and translations, uh, which is offered by our department. This is a very big scheme. They uh, on class a, a wide range of different master programs. We are actually one of the youngest one. Our program launched uh, since 2015, and I think this is the seventh year of its launch, and we have a very fruitful result. We really have a very nice growth. Uh, we'll share more about that later on. So uh, I would like to talk about some history before I move on to uh, introducing the elements in the program, because we are so young, there must be a reason why we would like to launch a program in this area, right? So just to give you a very brief idea as why we are thinking or why we have thought about uh, you know, offering a program in bilingual corporate communication since 2012. So we actually have done a, a couple of uh, research, uh, marketing research, and also we look into the uh, research data, which is done by other uh, university um, industry uh, organizations and also other institutions to look at whether there is really a societal needs and also a professional needs of the program. So just to give you some background, so we note that there is a very strong societal needs on uh, the uh, PR and communication professional in Hong Kong and in mainland China. This is partially due to the very fast changing societal and market environment. And also there is a very strong need for integrated strategic communications in business and corporate context, corporate sectors. So uh, we also noticed that there are a a lot of corporate bodies and institutions, they also showcase strong demand for recruiting professionals for PR or communication professionals, uh, practitioners, what we call uh, corporate communication practitioners. So they are looking for candidates who have a high level of knowledge in corporate communication, intercultural sensitivities, and also very strong in communication skilled uh, with very good bilingual competence. So by looking at these needs, we find out that we actually interview and find out that uh, people in the field who are working as corporate communication practitioners, usually they haven't had the chance to receive any professional training. So I'm not saying that they're not professional, but probably they are coming from various disciplines like communications, English, journalism, but uh, only a very few of them actually have been trained in the area of corporate communication. So there is a market need, a very strong market need, showing that uh, there will be a lot of uh, career positions available uh, in these areas. And these needs are confirmed through a wide range of surveys, as I have mentioned. For example, we look into the market industry survey, like the VMA market survey. We also look into manpower survey, our own trends and study survey, and also our own departmental market e-survey. And we confirm that there's really a very strong and growing need in manpower in terms of PR and communication professionals. And there is also a very strong demand on having a higher degree, so what we call master degree in corporate communications. So people are no longer satisfied with a bachelor degree and the employee, employer as well, is also looking for candidates who actually have a higher degree or further training in these areas. So we are Based on the result that we have yielded from our survey, we start to think about whether we need to have a master program in this area. So this is basically the core for program. And at the end, based on our observation over years, and it's turned out to be true that the market is really 
flooded with jobs in this area. So for every year, for every admission talk, I actually conduct a search right before the launch of the talk. So this year, I conduct a search on June 6, 2022. And then I look into two very popular job hunting websites in Hong Kong. One is JobDBs and the other is CareerJack. JobDBs actually have a very wide range of search. Even if I search for corporate communication, they will pull in related disciplines like marketing communications, uh, like uh, PR. So when you look at uh, JobsDB, you can find that you would note that a search two days ago actually yield 3,800 jobs in this area. And I then go for a more refined search with CareerJack, which is a very uh, concrete way of searching. So they only look for jobs that carry uh, keywords of corporate communication. Again, you can see that even for just one day search, you'll find out there are 722 jobs offered in a day. So clearly there is a market there. And if you have the data from last year, which I have, what well, it so happened because every year I do a search, right? Like this one. So last year, actually there are eight, 382 jobs. So it seems to have, to have uh, doubled in the growth of the number of positions offering in these areas. So there is clearly not just based on marketing research. And even if you look at the real job uh, recruitment uh, apps, there is really a growing demand that people or the employee, employer, the corporations uh, in Hong Kong, in uh, mainland and in Asia Pacific, they are looking for a professional group of people who actually have trainings in corporate communications. So this is why we have started to launch the program in 2015. Of course, there are some basic information then you can quickly get this information from our website, but just to walk you through some basic information, our programs runs in a mixed mode manner. Mixed mode means that we have both full-time and part-time students uh, taking courses, having courses together. And this is a self-finance program, same as the other family members in our MA scheme. Normally our program lasts for 1.5 years. This is one of the questions I get a lot of uh, inquiry. Uh, uh, why is 1.5 not 1? Uh, 1.5 because uh, we have elements like uh, thesis writing uh, or internships, which actually will take up more time than the than the one year period. So if you are looking for, or especially for those uh, part-time students who already are the ex expert who are working in the field, they need more time to complete the program. So normally we are looking at the 1.5 to 2.5 years of studies. But of course, if you want to fast track yourself, you're always welcome to, that, to do that. You can take more courses at a shorter time at the expense that you probably may not have a lot of choice of choosing the subjects because you probably have to take any subjects that offer in any of the semester. So uh, we have a very, very flexible um, mode. So it's depending on your schedule and uh, your own plan. So uh, for all the MA courses, we're looking for like uh, 30 uh, credits. That means around 10 subjects. And in our program, we are not just looking at uh, but corporate communication, but we are also aiming to look at how language are being used in a corporate communication context. So that's why our, our program are offered uh, using the strength of our departments, where we have a lot of expertise in language mediated communication. So something related to languages and also bilingual and cross-cultural communication as well as sign mediated communication. So how you make use of sign uh, to communicate in a corporate uh, uh, context is also one of our major focus. So we hope that with the training that offered by the program, students will be able to develop a very good bilingual competence, as well as a very sound knowledge in the corporate communication sector. So these are, to sum up, the program highlights three areas. Uh, first is you probably won't find any other program similar to us in the rest of the world, because probably we are the only program that highlight bilingual proficiency, because we hope that students could a point completion of the program, students could work in Hong Kong and also in other parts of the world. So being uh, capable of using two languages uh, proficiently in communication is uh, an advantage. So bilingual proficiency in a professional communication is definitely one of our very unique positioning. Uh, multicultural awareness, because you can see 
in the globalization process, there's a lot of movement between the globalized company going to local context and also local company going to the global context. So a multicultural awareness and also a very sound profession specific knowledge. That means what really is corporate communication professionals doing in the field? They are not just doing, uh, you know, translation. Instead, they're doing a lot of professional uh, specific functions, for example, like uh, identity building, like uh, CSL communications, crisis communications, uh, strategic communications. So there are a, a very wide range of functions being provided by practitioner in the field. And we also hope that students will have both a global and strategic mindset. So we are we're hoping to nurture global and strategic communicator by providing not just theory, but also practices. I'm going to talk about that later on, because uh, if you look at our, our teaching team, we actually have very strong team built by both academics, who obviously will teach theory, but also a very strong team of practitioner who will introduce a lot of industry practices to our students and our students will have a very good chance to interact with these outstanding practitioners and scholars. So it's not just about teaching, it's also about relationship building, uh, interacting, building connections, so that uh, both the scholars and the practitioners could be your uh, reverie in the future. So if you're looking for a job in the market, and then we'll be able to provide you with very nice uh, reference letter in that case. So our curriculum is very highly conceptual and practical. So it's not just about theory because as I have mentioned, we wish to equip students with both theories and practice perspectives, right? So if you look at uh, the intended learning outcomes, of course, in well, intentionally, we want to train students uh, to enhance their bilingual communication skills. We want to uh, enhance your cross-cultural sensitivities and awareness. We want to enrich your corporate communication knowledge. Uh, but in the long run, we also want to equip you with uh, very good writing and speaking skills and also your ability to develop research in the future. So it's not just for academic, because if you look at uh, businesses, if you look at communication, marketing, we all need research to back up our proposal. So even if you want to advise your, uh, your boss, uh, you know, to come up with a social media plan, you actually need to research into your own field and your competitors uh, uh, social media uh, behavior in order to come up with a proposal of how you can enhance your company's social media communication. So we want to develop a very all round skill for the students and these all round skills will comprise of both conceptual knowledge and practical knowledge. That's why you will be able to see on the list we have conceptual based subjects, for example, subjects that involve a lot of theories and also academic perspective, like uh, uh, the study of corporate communications, uh, communication in multilingual and multicultural context, uh, bilingualism, how it's used in different uh, contexts. And also we have vocalizations, crisis communication management, digital media communication, which are all embedded with theories. Of course, we will have case, we will have examples, but they are mostly theory driven. But we also have a very long list of practical subjects that trains you to enhance your bilingual competence, uh, your uh, industry sense, and also connect you to the real world. So we have workshops like uh, advanced workshop in written, advanced workshop in oral communications, uh, workshops in professional seminars like practices and challenges. And we also have internship uh, arrangement for students if they are interested to join because this is a elective. So this is up to the students. Uh, we also have very thorough uh, research training. If you really are interested in writing uh, research work like dissertation, you can actually take up a dissertation writing. Uh, if you're thinking about doing like a doctoral or PhD in the future, this would be very useful. Even if not, if even if you're just looking for like trainings in marketing research or uh, communication research, this will also enhance your knowledge in this area. Of course, we are not just limited to BCC since we are coming from a big family of language and Chinese language and translations, right? So we also uh, provide a 
basket of subjects uh, which is offered by our sister program, like from the linguistic program, translation program, Chinese culture program, uh, language teaching program, and speech therapy. So if you want to really uh, extend your comfort zone, then you can try out um, to learn something from different program, and then that would also enhance your scope uh, of knowledge. And at the end, for those students who are doing very well, they actually will receive scholarships uh, upon their graduation. We also have another scholarship which would, would be offered to students who are doing exceptionally well before they get in. So we have different types of scholarship which will be offered either at the beginning of your study or at the end of your study. And normally these scholarships are given out based on your academic performance. So there is a very strong uh, support. If you are really doing well in the program, then you will get lots of uh, connections with uh, academics and practitioners. You will also get uh, financial support from uh, our department by getting the scholarships. So let's introduce our team of expertise. So as I have mentioned, we have a highly integrated teaching teams, right? So who is going to teach in the program? I think this is a good time to at least get a grab of who are the teachers uh, being in, involved in the teaching of the program. So as I have mentioned, conceptually, we have a lot of uh, theoretical driven subjects. So there are a, a very big team of academics, including myself. My expertise is in leaders communication, social media communication, and our department head, Professor David Lee, who is an expert in English and also bilingual communication. And we also have experts in uh, discourse study, media language and communication. So that's Dr. Liu Ming is one of the experts in this area. And we also have a, a very strong uh, teammate who have practitioner background, uh, Mr. Jackin Wong. He actually, uh, before he joined academic, he actually works in advertising field for some times. So he's very good with digital marketing, Google analytics. So we have a very good academic team, which is also supported by our practitioner team. In this team, we don't call them visiting lecturer because they are adjunct. That means they are with us for more than three years and then they are part of our, our faculty member. So our adjunct faculties include Mr. C.F. Kwan, who is the director of uh, corporate communication in Hanlong property. And his expertise lies in crisis communications and CSL communication. And we also have Ms. Mei Wong, who is currently the director of corporate sustainability in Hang Seng Bank. And she also worked for MTL for over 10 years before. And we also have another very strong adjunct member, uh, Mr. Ben Yu Zheng. Ben Yu Zheng actually is the founder of Digital Transformation Alliance, and he is one of the leader in the field of digital transformations and digital marketing. So these three adjunct faculty, they, only, they are not only teaching for us, they are also providing a lot of support uh, for the student development. For example, if you look at um, uh, Mr. Kwan, he actually offer a lot of career consultation and also company visit, even during COVID, which is a very tough tough time. Uh, and then he has very good time leading the students to, uh, you know, to walk around his company to look at how things are being performed in his departments, and how uh, the day to day operations of corporate communication is conducted in a real world context. May actually got a coaching certificate from US. So apart from teaching, she also offered professional coaching, which actually provides support, not just to your career development, but also to your personal development. So coaching is not just about career, it's also about how you rethink about your life and how you live your life. And then Ben Yud, uh, he is an expert in digital transformation and he is also an expert in entrepreneurship because he himself has set up a, a various of a number, a good number of company. And he also serves as judges in a lot of entrepreneurship competition. So he provides a lot of advising to our students. Like you can see that this is one of our, Emma is one of our students last year. Uh, she, apart from studying with us, she also developed proposal to join a lot of competitions. And uh, lately she actually get a micro, uh, polio micro fund to fund her uh, project. And now she set up a company. Uh, uh, it's called uh, on Dress Green, and then it's doing, she's doing very well with the company. 
And uh, Benny also coach other students, like uh, we, he also offer coaching to students who are in uh, mainland China. So one group of our students actually won the first prize in the eighth uh, Chinese university student PR planned contact in mainland China. And then uh, these students are now uh, working, some of them are working in Hong Kong right now, some of them has uh, returned to their hometown and they find very good jobs after, the, uh, after they have completed their study in our program. So apart from our junk faculty, we also have a very strong VL team. That means a visiting lecturer team who provide a wide range of subjects that will facilitate the training on our students. For example, we have Patricia Young. She is award-winning trilingual MC, and then she provides training to our students on oral communications. And she is actually one of the big fan of the, uh, a, a very fav uh, favorite uh, MC uh, of these uh, big company in Hong Kong. And we have Dr. Raymond Zhang, who is the founder and CEO of Wise Institute. And then he offers a lot of uh, consultancy to different type of company in Hong Kong and the Asia Pacific region. He also teach one of the subjects called 5411, vocalization and media communication. Then we have Marina Lauren, who is the managing director of Magnum Muse. Marina actually used to work for Con and Wolf as a marketing director for over 10 years. And now she opened up her own company. And then all these three visiting lecturers are of CEO or director level. So they provide very professional advice and training to students in our elective courses. And of course, as I have mentioned, we have very good connection with academics overseas. So we have uh, connections with academics in US, Europe, and in uh, Asia. We also, well, uh, when the time, when the situation is better, we also invite them to travel to, to Hong Kong to speak to our students. Uh, this is the picture that we have took, taken before the um, COVID. And then we also send students to participate in the strategic forum in New York, of course, before the outbreak of COVID. And then students learn a lot from this kind of uh, uh, international uh, presentations and exchange uh, experience. So what did students do after they graduate? So students actually acquire a lot of uh, uh, knowledge and uh, skills in a communications perspective, and they join a lot, they, uh, a lot of our top graduates actually managed to either secure internship or a full-time position in very top global and local companies. So uh, they join very big brand in a, in a sense. So a lot of them join like world leading PR uh, consultancy. Uh, I think these names are very familiar to everyone in the field, like Branson Mastellas, uh, and now they are renamed it and as uh, Bronson Conan Wolf, uh, Fishman Hewlett, Hewan Newton, Ketchum, Augerfeed, Rudavin, and then we got students joining them almost every year. And then uh, we also have students joining Global 500 and Global 2000 company. They could be either Hong Kong based or in mainland China. So we have students joining Alibaba, China Mobile, uh, Ping An, and then DHL, uh, Manulife, Marriott, Tencent, TikTok, UNICEF. Uh, HSBC and then lots of them. So it was very good, difficult to name every of them because uh, they got very good career and sometimes they change their position every one to two years. And we also have students who join some very good local company like uh, Watson's Group, uh, Hutchison, Hong Kong Land, MTL, PCCW. So these are a lot of examples uh, that will showcase that our students are actually interdisciplinary they could move across discipline because the training in corporate communication are not just focused in corporate communication we also have a part that overlapped with marketing communication and branding that's why students could work in marketing communication and branding we also have a part that overlap with public relations that's why students could also work in pr consultancy we actually also have something to overlap with advertising and human resources. That's why you will see students joining diff different brick brands, working in different departments, even in advertising and human resources department. The good news is for those who are local students, even if you join us and then you have, a, you have already started your career, and then even if you join us after starting the career, you will still get a salary increase. So this is the latest uh, data we get from our program survey, our graduate program survey. We have 71% of students responding to the survey, which is a very encouraging number. And uh, the range of salary that students are getting or the graduate are getting are ranging from 
150,000 to 600,000 per year. Then you probably will wonder why there are, there are people who earn so much because some of our students actually are practitioner in the field. So there are a very good number of practitioners who really want to uh, get a higher degree and then advance in their career. So they join, up, join us midway in their career. So that after joining us, they even have a salary increase. And that's why you will be seeing some of the students actually are, are earning like 600,000 per year. So the survey result tells us that half, nearly half of the survey respondent received salary increase increment. That means a salary increase after joining the program. And then 47% of the respondent report a career advancement after graduation. So career advancement means that they got at least one rank promotion after joining or after graduating. So some of them even got two rank advance. That means they have been promoted to two rank higher after they have graduated from the program. So it's not just a program for fresh rank fresh graduates is also a program for like junior to mid career communication professionals because with these higher degrees it would help you to jump up the career ladder and get a career advancement in the field so if you are interested i believe that you can find these sharings from our uh, latest uh, program leaflet, which is provided by our lovely marketing team. They have done a very good job in uh, designing this leaflet. And then we have two out of our first cohort graduates sharing uh, what they have gained and how the program helped them to get promoted. So Shailene actually is the first uh, uh, she is the first cohort student, but she is a part time. So she takes like almost three years to graduate, but she did get a promotion after graduation. And she also are now coming back to, to do some visiting lecturing for us. Uh, Jeffrey is one of the, the is one of the student in our first cohort. So a point the graduation, he actually uh, work in Hong Kong in Ogilvy for two years. Then he go back to uh, mainland China to work in uh, Tencent, TikTok, and lately he is working in Alibaba as a brand specialist. He lead a team of his own, so he is one of the brand specialists in Alibaba. This is one of the top positions in the in the uh, marketing department. So I guess these are the uh, basic admission and application requirements. And if you are interested, I would urge you to look at our website because these are all details uh, like what kind of university you are required to come from and what are the language requirements. And if you need further information, uh, I will strongly encourage you to contact Tony because he is the first part of call regarding any programmed admissions. And uh, this is Tony's phone number and his emails. And of course, you can also write to me, but usually Tony will be a very good uh, gatekeeper and then he will provide you with a lot of information that you need. Okay, so not to use up all the time, I hope I haven't. <laughs> so uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to type it in the chat room. I'm happy to provide you with more answers if needed. Or you can just turn on the mic and talk to me directly. I think I still have 10 minutes left, right, to take up some questions from the crowd. <laughs> Uh, yes, Yanis, uh, whether there is still a chance of just going back to space yet. Uh, yes, um, Yanis, thank you for your questions. Uh, yeah, I will encourage uh, you to submit the application as soon as possible. So just to share with you, uh, because our application actually is a rolling application, uh, rolling admission. That means we start taking in students. Our, I think the start date of the application is in September, October. Now we already have nearly uh, 400 applicants. And this year um, we have around, I can tell you, around 50 places. And now we are, you know, uh, I, I don't have the exact number because the exact number is with Tony, but I think we are almost uh, over half full. So if you are interested in the program, I would strongly encourage you to act fast. Hi, uh, Cindy, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, hi. Uh, is that <laughs> uh, You can call me ZZ. ZZ, okay. <laughs> okay, hi. ZZ, nice meeting you. So, uh, uh, yeah, my question was, what were you, what were you saying? Yeah, yeah, anything that you would like to ask? 
Yeah, uh, my question was, uh, is the language proficiency test um, mandatory for everybody? Because I, I am studying in the University of Washington right now and the teaching language here is English in it every day. Is there any, any way else we can prove our language proficiency? Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I, writing yeah. Sample? Okay. Thank you for the question. I think this is a very relevant one. A lot of uh, people may be thinking about this one. Uh, if you, based on my knowledge, if you are graduating from US or, you know, university that used English as a teaching medium, then the language medium may not be an issue for you guys. But if you have proof, for example, if you have IELTS result or TOEFL result, you are also welcome to submit that, but not necessarily important for, for students who have a bachelor degree from university that use English as a teaching medium. Thank you, that's very helpful. Thank you for that. So I hope I'll be seeing your application very soon. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the, the application for September is still open, right? Right now. Yes, yes. We I think we start taking in we start accepting application in September. Uh, but our first round of interview has already completed is on December. And then we have already released quite a number of offers. So we really don't have a lot of room left, but uh, I would strongly encourage you to, you know, to apply as soon as possible, because the later you apply, um, the number of vacancy will drop, and then it, was, it will be more difficult to get in. Uh, but uh, the, good news is that, uh, the good news is I did talk to the scheme leader if we really uh, spot a very excellent candidate uh, uh, from the um, from the application batch, even if our quota are filled, we probably will have some leeways, maybe a, 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 some rooms to to accept a few number of candidates, even if even with, if we go beyond the quota. So, but I, I would still advise uh, taking a, a prompt actions because the more delay, the more competitive it is. <laughs> because, I understand that. Yeah. Uh, that, that leads to another question, probably the last one, I'll leave it to others. Uh, so okay. what, what qualification do you value the most, maybe out of an applicant? Because I'm not very confident uh, with my GPA, the COVID season really ruined a lot of classes for me last year. What qualifications would you value uh, the most? Yes, very good questions. Uh, I think your question is actually related to Iris questions. Um, the minimum requirement for the GPA on the honors uh, to apply. Um, uh, yes, honestly speaking, we will look at your undergraduate school. Um, normally, okay, uh, based on my impression, normally we are looking at um, at least, for example, if your, your overall GPA requirement is four, we are looking at at least three. And then uh, with uh, some uh, relevant experience. So it also depends, for example, um, if you come from a very competitive university, then we may expect this. less on the GPA because well, if you're coming from Harvard, of course, we probably will be you know, expecting less from the GPA, but normally we will be looking for like a, a, a three out of four in the GPA and then uh, some relevant experience. For example, if you have internship, which is related to communication, not uh, necessarily corporate communications, for example, in marketing, PR, advertising, um, or in like um, social media, uh, or new media that would definitely help. So we would look into these uh, work experience and probably we would be more lenient on the academic performance in that case. Uh, and cross major application. Yes, 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 absolutely. So we, well, uh, to tell you the truth, it's actually very difficult to find candidates uh, who have a bachelor degree in corporate communication. As I have mentioned, this is a very new area, a very emerging or a very, you know, a, a rising area in the field. So uh, when we are in taking students, a lot of students actually don't have training in corporate communication. But I believe that if you have training in related area, for example, like the areas that Afon mentioned, like uh, marketing, like a uh, business, uh, English, um, language, communications, uh, journalism, uh, I think even for like broadcasting, that would also help, advertising, uh, this would all help. So if you are coming from these disciplines, you're most welcome. And then uh, you also asked a very good question on the interview, right? What we are looking at. So 
during the interview, we conduct interview for every shortlisted candidate. So we don't give out uh, offer directly. So for the interview, we are looking uh, for uh, the candidates uh, knowledge in the uh, communication discipline. So we will ask questions about how well did you know about these disciplines like uh, corporate communication, marketing communications, where we ask uh, questions about the discipline specific ones. And we also ask questions uh, about uh, your uh, work experience, because I think that's very important. If you have relevant work experience, that would actually prepare you to, to go for a master in this area. So we we'll also ask questions about the work experience. And most importantly, because corporate communications needs to deal with both internal and external communication, and we need to handle different types of stakeholders and also internal departments. So the maturity and the independency of the candidate is highly valued. That means uh, we, we will also ask questions to test the candidate's maturity and also their level of independence. So these are basically the four areas. Of course, we also look at English level, the fifth area, because um, in Hong Kong, if we want the candidate or our graduates to go into a global company, I believe English is a must. So we're also uh, very concerned about this part. So basically these five are what we are looking at. So I hope that will help you prepare for the interview. <laughs> Okay, so Iris also asked, um, she has taken IELTS in 2020 and then submitted result. And uh, she is attempting to take the second IELTS and, oh, oh, oh okay. Uh, if you have already submitted one, uh, you want to update your uh, result, right? I couldn't be able to fill in one more. Ah, you probably need to um, write to Tony about that. So he will guide you through the steps, how to update your result in the system. Uh, let me flip, uh, flip back to Tony. So please write to Tony and then uh, update him with your latest IL result. I think that would help. Uh, the system is now being considered result. Um, no, uh, we don't reject your invited thought. Um, okay, actually we have, well, what I can share with you, we have uh, several rounds of, uh, I, I have to, okay, the time is running up, but uh, let me uh, quickly answer this one. We have several rounds of screenings and uh, shortlisting before you get the interview. So maybe you are still being considered, but uh, not being shortlisted yet, because we usually shortlist the most a potential one first, uh, but we're still doing the shortlisting. The other, I think the next round of the shortlisting and the interview will be conducted in late January or early February, mostly either before New Year or after New Year. We will try not to do interview during the New Year. So please stay tuned because uh, you will be getting email from Tony if you have already applied and then he will inform you about the date and time accordingly. So I guess because of the time, I probably need to run because I think the, the next uh, program leader is already have already joined us. Uh, thank you everyone for taking time to talk to me and thank you for coming for the briefing. And uh, if you want more answers, please feel free to write to me or Tony. Uh, he will be a very good first pull up call if you're asking about admissions issues like how to use the system or uh, updating your records, uh, he will be very helpful. And thanks again. Uh, Everybody, hope you have a very nice new year and a great year of Tiger and stay healthy and stay safe because the Omicron is in full swing right now. Okay, so uh, take care. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.